Hello class. Um, we're going to now learn how to actually make confidence intervals. We're going to go through section um, 8.2. Uh, like I said, this is a very procedural process. Um, you're going to realize that the problems from this section to 8.3 to 8.4 are going to feel very similar mechanically. I mean, working them out, they're going to seem very similar. The difference here is knowing what distribution you are using, okay? Now, uh, we've got three population parameters, okay? We've got the population mean, mu. We've got the population uh, standard deviation, sigma. And we also have the population proportion, p, okay? Those are the three uh, population parameters we're going to be dealing with when making confidence intervals. Okay, Now, we're not going to deal with uh, confidence intervals for the standard deviation until chapter 11, until we're done with chapter 8. Okay, So what we talk about in chapter 8 are how to make confidence intervals for the population mean, if we don't know what it is, just like uh, my example. Um, Students at CLC, if I wanted to know the average age of CLC students, I don't know what the population average is, so th that would be what I would be estimating with these confidence intervals. Now also, I may not know the proportion of students who are full-time students opposed to part-time students. So I could use a confidence interval to estimate that proportion. So in 8.2 and in 8.3, we talk about constructing confidence intervals for the mean, okay, so for mu. Now, it's very important whether you know the population standard deviation or you don't know the population standard deviation, okay? You have to read the problem carefully and see what they tell you, okay? If you know the population standard deviation, so that's what we talk about in this section, for known sigma, your error formula is going to be calculated slightly differently than 8.3 when we don't know sigma, okay? So now let's go ahead and talk about um, the formulas that are behind this. So... We know that our confidence interval is going to be x bar, our point estimate, right? So right here, if you recall from the last video, this is our point estimate. Minus the error, comma, x bar plus the error, and e was the error. So now, if you know... If sigma is known, then your error formula is equal to z sub alpha divided by 2 times sigma, the population standard deviation, you know it, they have to tell you it in the problem, divided by the square root of n. Okay, so now this z of alpha over 2, how do we find that? Okay, first let me tell you what uh, the z alpha over 2 is. z alpha divided by 2 is the critical value for the uh, confid dense level. Z sub alpha divided by 2 is the critical value for the confidence level. Okay? So let's see. Get rid of that. Keep those up there. So if we have our um, confidence level, if we need to find this alpha right here, 
alpha is equal to 1 minus the confidence level, whatever the confidence level is. Now, earlier in, uh, in the previous video, I had percentages up here. Normally, the confidence level are given as percentages. When you do this calculation, you have to turn it into a decimal. Okay, so if this was a 95% confidence level, I would turn it to a 0.95 and then do the um, then do the subtraction. Okay, and then you got to take that alpha value and divide it by two. Okay, now to find z alpha divided by two, use inverse norm. Okay. Now what we're doing here is when we're using inverse norm with this uh, alpha value, you're fine. They're called critical numbers because they're at the very end of your area that you are looking at. So if I were to draw a normal distribution, so remember confidence intervals a range of numbers. So we're at one range, we're at the other range. It's kind of like the idea. So. Uh, you want the extreme values, you want these Z values right there, okay? Okay, so use inverse norm. Let's see, I want to keep the formula up here. If you have my notes, you have the formula on the paper, but uh, Z alpha divided by 2 is equal to inverse norm. If you remember how to get to inverse norm, you have to hit second vars. Um, I believe it's the third option. Um, inverse norm, whatever you got for alpha over 2. Okay, whatever number that came out to be, remember it was 1 minus your confidence level, then you're going to get a number, you divide it by 2, that's the number that's going to go right here. And then 0, 1. So what we're doing here, since this is a z value, we are using the z distribution. We are using the z distribution for to approximate uh, the mean. Okay, remember the z distribution was the same thing as the normal distribution. Okay. Now, after you calculate this number, you're going to use the calculator to find this number. All you have to do is plug it in here, multiply it by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, and you've got your error. Now, you should already have your point estimate. Either you found it or they told it to you. And now all you have to do is construct the actual interval. Okay? So let's go ahead and do an example. Um, if you read the problem on uh, the page, it says a random sample of 49 students, so they told us our sample size is 49, have a grade point average with a population standard deviation. That's the key right here. They told you it was a population standard deviation of 0.78. Now find the margin of error if the confidence level is 98%. So confidence level equals 98%. They don't tell us the point estimate for the grade point average. So in this problem, we cannot find the confidence interval. This problem only asks us to compute the error. So if you recall, the error formula from a little bit ago was z alpha divided by 2 times sigma divided by square root of n. Well, we already have sigma. We could plug it in. We already have n. We could plug it in. The only thing we're missing is z alpha divided by 2. So let me go ahead and find alpha. Alpha is 1 minus the confidence level, so 1 minus 0.98. Well, that's 0.02. So then alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.01. So now to find z of 0 0.01, because that's what alpha over 2 is, that's equal to inverse norm 0 0.01, comma 0, comma 1. And that's going to give me a value. Give me a second on my calculator. Uh, inverse norm. 0 0.01 comma 0 comma 1 paste 
Now, it is going to give you a negative value, but that is because you, if again, if I were to draw the curve, it's symmetric about zero, it gave you the lower z of 0 0.1. You need the upper one, but if you recall, the z distribution is symmetric about the mean. Remember, this is the area, mean, standard deviation, z distribution had a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. It's symmetric about the mean, so whatever this number is, this number is just a positive form of this, okay? In fact, we, when you do this calculation, that's fine that you get a negative number. All we need is the positive form of it, okay? So it doesn't matter if you get the negative form, we're gonna knock the negative off of it. Oops, I wanted to keep that. The alpha divided by two. So, make positive. So now we have our error. It's 2.326, our z of alpha over 2, remember we made it positive, times our sigma, which is 0 0.78, divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 49. Now all we have to do is compute this number and we have our error. So 2.326 times 0.78 divided by the square root of 49. I hit enter and I get 0.2591. So right here is what the question was asking for. What is the margin of error in this problem? Okay, let's do another example. The next example, we actually find the, uh, the confidence interval. It's going to be the same procedure that I went through here, which is going to be one more added step because in this problem, we are given the point estimate. And now all we have to do is make the interval. Take the point estimate, add and subtract the error. Okay. So if you look at my notes, it says suppose scores on an exam in statistics are normally distributed with an unknown population mean and a population standard deviation of three points. Okay, They told us the population standard deviation was three points. That is very critical right here. They told you the population standard deviation. Since they told you the population standard deviation, you should be using the Z distribution. Okay, I'll point this out when we get to the next section as well. Um, let's see. A random sample of 36 scores um, is taken and gives a sample mean X bar of 68. So this right here, the sample mean is going to be our point estimate for our confidence interval. So point estimate. Find a confidence interval, uh, find a confidence interval estimate for the population mean exam score. Um, find a 90% confidence interval. So let's see. Confidence level equals 90%. Okay, first thing you need to do is find your error. Error is equal to, again, this formula is going to change depending on what section we're in. What distribution are we using? Um, so it's Z of alpha divided by 2. Sigma divided by square root of n. I have sigma, I have square root of n. Only thing I don't have is z alpha over 2. Okay, so we're going to, again, do the same thing as we did in the last problem. Alpha is equal to 1 minus 0 0.9, which is 0 0.01, or sorry, not 0 0.01, 0 0.1. And then we're going to find alpha over 2. If we divide this by 2, we get 0 0.5 or 
0 0.05. So now to find z of point zero, 0 0 0.05, just replace the alpha over 2 with this number here. Well, that's equal to the inverse norm of point zero 0.05, comma, 0, comma, 1. And now this is when you get out your calculator. Uh, second vars, go to option number 3. For the area, point zero 0.05. For the mu 0, standard deviation 1, paste. It should look exactly like this. You hit enter. You get negative 1.644, and what are you going to do to it? You're going to make it positive. Okay, so um, I would say we're like uh, third way done here. We need to calculate our error now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this over here, z of 0 0.05 is equal to 1.644 because uh, we're going to use that piece of information in a little bit. So let me erase. We already know all this. Our confidence interval we no longer need. That was used to help us find alpha. So right now on the board is our relevant information that we need. I need to calculate my error. My error is the z alpha over 2. I found that. 1.644 times my sigma, which is 3, divided by square root of my n, which is 36. And then you just plug this into the calculator. 1.644 times 3 divided by square root of 36. Enter and you get 0.822. Okay, now that we found our error, let's go ahead and find the upper bound of our uh, confidence interval. So if you recall, it's just x bar plus the error. Well, x bar is 68 plus my error, which I found, was 0.822. Well, that's 68.822. So I'm going to get rid of some stuff, stuff we don't need. I'm going to move stuff over. So we got the error is equal to 0.822. Now we need to find our lower bound. Well, that's equal to x bar minus my error. So 68 minus 0.822, uh, well, that's equal to 0.8, oh, not 0.8, uh, 67.198, if I have that correct. Let me see, give me a second. 68 minus 0.822. Seven, eight. There we go. Okay, so here's our confidence interval. Our confidence interval is 67.178 to 68.822. Now, I don't know... I don't know what the true population average exam score is. That's what the problem is trying to estimate. If we read the problem one more time, and let's interpret this. Reading the problem says, suppose scores on an exam in, uh, in statistics are normally distributed with an unknown population mean. Since it's unknown, we are trying to estimate it. That's the point of making this confidence interval. And a population standard deviation of three points. Okay, that number was just used to help us uh, calculate this. A random sample of 36 scores is taken and gives a sample mean of 68. 
So we want to find a confidence interval for the true population uh, mean of statistic exam scores. Now, we took a sample size of 36. We got a point estimate, which was 68. We constructed a 90% confidence interval based on that. Now, if we were to take a second sample, the X bar is going to be something different. What if it's something like 70? Or I take a third sample, and it's going to be 67, something like that. But if we keep taking samples of size 36 and construct confidence intervals for all, all those samples in the same way, 90%, because that is our confidence level, 90% of those intervals will contain the true population um, average exam score. Okay. So another way of saying this, again in more relaxed terms, we are 95 or sorry, 90% sure that our confidence interval contains the true population average mu or in this case the true population average exam score. All right, um so now what we're going to do, there's, there's a way to do this on the calculator, okay? Um, this is just a quick way. This was all doing it by hand, showing you how the formulas work. Uh, so if you get out your calculator right now, I'll show you how to do it. Um, what you have to do is go to your, just hit the stat button. And what you're going to go to, it brings up the normal list where you have edit, where you could edit your list. Go to test. If you look at the very top of the screen, up top here, you want to go to tests right there. If you look in the book as well, they go through these steps too. So if you're not following along with the video, uh, look in the book, they explain it, and they show calculator images like this. So what we're going to go to is go to test and scroll down to number seven Z interval okay Z interval now once you're there you're gonna hit enter and if you look this is what you should see when you hit enter now you have two choices if you have raw data, you could store it into a list, tell the calculator where the list is, and it'll construct a confidence interval for you. Normally in these problems, we have the statistics of the sample, so we're going to go to stats. Now, if you look on stats, they have everything that you need on there, the same information that you were given in the problem. You Sigma. That was our population standard deviation, which they told us was three. The population average X bar, sorry, not population average, sample average X bar was 68. Then they told us a sample size of 36 and our confidence interval of 0.9. So now all you do is go down to calculate, hit enter, and it will tell you your confidence interval. So let's go ahead and uh, write that down. Oh wow, look at that. The calculator gave us exactly 67.178 to uh, 68.822. So this is the calculator confidence interval right there. So this is a uh, slightly faster way to get the answer. Um, I know some problems on your homework will ask you, they'll give you the confidence interval, okay? So this is how to do it in the calculator. We'll go through it again because there's some other things we got to go through um, in the next sections. But sometimes the problems in the homework, they'll give you the confidence inter interval and they'll ask you what is the point estimate without telling you anything else, okay? This is the only information you are given. Think about how a confidence interval is constructed. It's x bar minus the error 
x bar plus the error. So if I were to draw this on a number line where x bar is somewhere there, and I go, if I, uh, this would be x bar plus e, this distance right here is e, but then over here is x bar minus e, well this distance right here is also e, meaning x bar has to be exactly in the middle of any interval they give you. So what you could do to find the point estimate from an interval, add the endpoints, and divide by 2. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So 67.178 plus 68.822 all divided by 2. We could just use our calculator to uh, quickly do this. 67.178 plus 68.822. Hit enter. Divide that by 2. Oh, would you look at that? We got 68, which was exactly our point estimate. Now, another thing that they can do, an added on step to this, if they just give you the interval and ask you to find a point estimate, here's how you do it. Something they can do is give you the interval and ask you, what is the margin of error? Okay? So, if you, again, recall, let's leave, let's leave that there. Recall that one of these numbers, say this one, was x bar plus your error. Well, you know what x bar is. We, If you're just given the interval, you find the midpoint of the interval. That's your point estimate. That'd be step one. Step two is just solve an equation. x bar plus your error should be equal to 68.822. So this would be 68 plus your error is equal to 68.822 minus 68, minus 68, we find the error is 0.822. You could go the other way. You know this one is uh, x bar minus your error. That must equal 67.178. And if you do the work and solve for e, you're going to find out you get the same e value. All right. So just to recap, some problems only give you the confidence interval. They don't tell you any of the information how we had at the start of the problem. Then they will ask you to find the point estimate. To find the point estimate, you just find the midpoint of the interval. Add these and divide by 2. If they were to ask you to find the error associated with this confidence interval, you have to find the point estimate. And then all you do is pick one of them and solve one of the equations for your error. Okay?